Welcome to this breaking news episode of MSP Dispatch on May 4th, 2022. Today, we're talking about the recent notification on the Reddit post that SMTP2Go has a vulnerability allowing access of anyone that has any account at all to send as any other account that has been validated on SMTP2Go. A full write-up has been given by Stephen Murphy on his blog. We'll include the links below. Uh, basically, this was privately disclosed to the parties in January of this year, uh, including ConnectWise, the uh, famous PSA RMM vendor. ConnectWise hosted does use SMP to go. In fact, they do require use of it for their cloud hosted instances. Uh, notification was sent out in January of this year, and today marks the 90 day public disclosure. Note that on this 90th day, SMTP to go is still vulnerable, and ConnectWise is still making use of this. For those that don't know, Trend Micro reports that email phishing is the most widespread form of hacking across the globe. And to discuss email phishing, we've brought on the expert in the arena, CEO of Fin Security, a cybersecurity awareness and phishing simulation company. This is Connor Swalm. Connor, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Ray. Absolutely. I wanted to pick your brain because you know more about phishing than probably anybody else I know. Yeah, um, absolutely. How bad is phishing? How prevalent is it in SMBs today? So it depends on you know what kind of report you wanted to uh, cherry pick some data from or some information. A stat that I've heard and that I'm sure everyone has heard as of now is that 91% of cybersecurity breaches include phishing. You know we can debate that stat a little bit, but at the very least, most uh, most security breaches involve a human being fooled into doing something, whether that's giving away credentials or sensitive information, uh, at least. So part of part of uh, identifying these email breaches, or you called it BEC, what's a BEC? Business email compromise. It's a type of phishing. And so part of the identification process is identifying where the email comes from, right? Looking at the headers or even looking at the from email. More often than not, you know, the reply to is something else. It's coming from a Gmail right. or some free email service. But when that email is coming from your actual domain and it's been approved, you know, it's been uh, validated through DKIM, it's passed FPF record validation. How much more difficult does it make it to identify that phishing email? It makes it extremely hard, uh, extremely hard to actually detect that it's a phishing email because for all intents and purposes, by every metric that we tell users to look at, like you just mentioned, look at the actual sender, uh, look at the headers, all of that could seem real. And in the case of this SMTP Go, SMTP to Go issue, that's a mouthful. Um, you can actually impersonate the senders in a real valid way. So when you get an email from an individual, it's not a random email address sending you trying to be somebody else. In this case, it's the actual person trying to be somebody else. So that's why business email compromise, that's a very specific example, but business email compromise is very hard to detect because in a lot of cases, it's the actual person, so to speak, is reaching out to you, asking you to do something that almost certainly you've normally done in the past. Uh, it's just impossible to tell the difference. And that, that's part of the danger here to clarify anybody, including signing up for a trial account, even if you have not validated your own domain, you can send from any other domain period that's been validated on SMTP to go. That's what makes this so dangerous. Literally thousands of companies are out there using SMTP to go. They are one of the top three most commonly used email transaction companies. Um, there's others like Mailgun, SendGrid, uh, we Postmark app. You know, this could affect anyone, but unfortunately this is SMTP to go. Now we are calling this a CVE. I wanna be very clear. The actual convention for CVE, as I was uh, informed by Jason Slagle of CNWR, is only allowed for on-premises installed software. So cloud security cannot use CVE, so we have no CVE to link for MITRE or otherwise. Uh, there's a whole story behind that as well. Uh, so maybe we'll discuss that on another segment one of these days. But for now, we just wanted to make sure you're aware of it. If you're using SMTP to go in your own services, I strongly re recommend you review the links below and maybe discuss possible alternate solutions. We're not gonna tell you what to do with that. Uh, if you want, hit us up in the comments below, reach out to Connor, reach out to myself on socials. We will be covering this more in depth on Friday. We have reached out to both ConnectWise and we've reached out to SMTP2Go. 
for comment, and we've yet to receive comments at this point, but we will have more in-depth coverage, including interviews with Jason Slagle and Stephen Murphy, who originally uh, disclosed this, this vector of attack. Connor, thank you so much for being a part of this today. I really appreciate your insight, man. Thanks for having me, Ray. And for now, that's all for MSP Dispatch in this breaking news segment. Take care of yourselves and each other. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.